Hey guys, I wanted to showcase to you guys what I've been working in the lab. I've come across these uh, cards that uh, nobody ever uses in uh, Edison format, which is going to be the Sun Dragon Inti and the uh, Moon Dragon Quilla. So it's pretty much a Sun and Moon Dragon. Uh, no relevance to Pokemon whatsoever. But the idea behind this deck is to uh, be able to recycle these two guys in rotation. So you want to be able to make uh, the Sun Dragon first. And so whenever he gets destroyed by battle, which is uh, pretty hard to do, but in Edison format where there's Kalut and Honest, uh, being able to destroy these in uh, combat uh, allows you to destroy the monster that destroyed this card. So uh, additionally, it'll also burn your opponent for uh, half the attack uh, the monster had in the field. So if your opponent Honest is uh, their alias, for example, and it goes up to, uh, what is it, 4,900 attack. Uh, what it will do is that Sun Dragon will uh, actually trade with both the Honest and the Alias. And when this card gets destroyed, it will blow up the Alias be in, as a result of battle. And that will take half the damage that it had on the field. So if uh, if it goes up to 4,900 attack, then they're going to be taking, uh, what is it, um, 2,000, I want to say? Uh, no, it's 25, 2,450. So they'll take 2,400, uh, 2,450 if they, uh, in burn damage if you crash this guy into the Alias. And the idea is if you ever bring out the Moonquilla uh, on the subsequent turn, then uh, what they do is that if he gets destroyed or targeted by attack first, if he gets targeted by an attack, then what happens is he gains half the attack of the uh, monster that, that is attacking it. So that uh, this is a passive effect. So whenever it gets attacked, you get to gain life points. Uh, life points is really crucial in this uh, in this game or in this deck because this uh, deck likes to crash a lot of its recruiters to go into its plays. But I'll go into that more uh, after this. But then after this gets sent to the graveyard uh, by being destroyed, you can special summon this uh, Sun Dragon Inti. Mind you, they both have to be properly synchro summoned to be able to revive each other. So th th these cards get Solemn uh, Judgment or um, I can't think of another card, but uh, Thunder King Ryo, I guess. If both Thunder King Ryo and uh, Solemn Judgment both negate the summons of these cards, then you are unable to revive each other from the graveyard. So that's kind of the downside to playing this deck. But the upside is that you get some style points and then you get to play a card that uh, nobody's ever using. It has a really decent matchup against Absolute Zero decks because Absolute Zero is one of those cards that likes to destroy the entire board on your opponent's side uh, or on your side if it gets destroyed or sent to the graveyard. So by using the Sun Dragon to revive the, the Moon Dragon Quilla or the Moon Dragon Quilla to revive the Sun Dragon, then the Absolute Zero has no effect on your board, uh, your board state. Um, so that's kind of the idea. Uh, so my deck is uh, a Ghost Second deck. So in Edison format, uh, Ghost Second decks are very rare and far in between. So because of that, you have to you have the ability to special summon Cyber Dragon and Oracle of the Sun. These are both monsters that special summon themselves. If your opponent controls a monster, so that's why you want to go second because if they have a monster, you can special summon these guys. And that's kind of the idea is to be able to special summon them and then the normal summon the Fire Ant Askatar. Or crash all uh, your recruiter into this guy because I do play six recruiters in this deck to be able to recruit the uh, Ascatar. So that's going to be nine copies of Ascatar. And then the idea is to be able to uh, synchro summon on your uh, the first turn and make the Sun Dragon Inti. Uh, sometimes it's not wise to make the Sun Dragon Inti, but the whole point of the deck is to be able that makes your deck uh, unique to all the other decks is that you're able to make these two guys. So you want to be able to make this guy over the Stardust, for example, which is very tempting for a lot of reasons to play on the first or on the second turn to be able to protect your back row because you are playing a hefty amount of traps in this deck. So you are playing 14 traps in this deck, including the MST, so that's 15. Uh, so then because you play such a high amount of traps in this deck, uh, it's very tempting to go into Stardust, but you want to be able to play the Sun Dragon Inti because it gives you the competitive advantage uh, because these guys are going to uh, make your deck shine whereas Stardust would not. So uh, the idea behind this deck is to be able to spam out level 5s. If you find yourself going first in this deck then Instant Fusion could get you a level 5 monster. I do play only one Reaper of Nightmare so uh, the other two Instant Fusions in your deck are kind of dead unless you plan on playing the uh, Cornolabi Warrior. I don't know how to say this. Carbon Nala Warrior. Uh, this card right here is a level uh, 4 uh, non-tuner. Uh, the reason why I play this card is because of uh, you want to make it into a Black Rose sometimes with the Fire Ant or the uh, the Cataster or the uh, Android uh, with the, the uh, Supe. So because you have uh, t more than one institution in your deck, uh, you want to be able to access uh, either or. But you don't need more level 5s in your extra deck because you have ways to recycle your level 5s. Uh, ways you can recycle your level 5s are using the Fire Ant Eskatar. Uh, when, it, when it's ever destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, 
uh, you can target one level five monster in your graveyard and spell summon that target. So that is a card that, if destroyed by battle, you could revive one of your level fives in your graveyard. Another way you can get a level five out is by Supe. Supe, if it's ever get destroyed by a card effect, you can spell summon an Oracle of the Sun from your deck. And if you do double its attack and then return it at the, your hand during the end phase. So this is a way you could uh, utilize this guy's effect as long as with the Oracle of the Sun is if you have Limit Reverse or Call the Haunted. Uh, if anybody activates a Heavy Storm or a MST to your back row and these Call the Haunted and Limit Reverse is set, you can flip these two cards, uh, either or, and then revive either the Oracle of the Sun or the Supe, and then they were able to generate you an advantage because uh, when they get destroyed, uh, they search. So uh, when Oracle gets destroyed by anything, either either by battle or by a card effect, you can either add a Supe to your hand or a Fire Ant as Uh Or if you get the Supe out with the Limit Reverse and Call the Haunted, the Supe will actually bring out the Oracle of the Sun from your deck, uh, and double its attack. So hopefully it survives, but in, in, in the event it does survive, then it goes back to your hand and then you're able to special summon it because uh, most likely you will not have a monster and your opponent will. And then you're able to synchro summon um, on the following turn, essentially is what the idea behind Supe is. So that's the idea behind Limit Reverse and Call the Haunted. I also play the Layer Wire because there are insects in this deck. I do play the Howling Insect as well as the Fire Ant Askatar, as well as the Hercules Beetle. So you might be wondering why I play the Hercules Beetle. The idea behind it is that you can special summon it with Howling Insect in defense position. And it's a level 5 uh, insect with 2,000 defense. So being uh, being a 2,000 defense monster against a lot of decks that play uh, like Hero Beat, for example, likes to have a 1,900 attack monsters and 1,800 defense stratos. So those monsters can't run over Hercules Beetle in defense position. So if they try to be aggressive and try to kill your Howling Insect, you, have, you at least have something in your deck that can defend off against the attack. It might even end the battle phase for a lot of the reasons. And then on the next turn, you can either normal summon the Supe or the Askatar or a Giant Rat and then crash and special summon the Askatar. That's kind of the idea. And then synchro summon into uh, Sun Dragon Inti. So that's kind of the idea. I also have um, Skill Drain as well. Skill Drain is a really good card because people like to play Caius in this, de in this format. Uh, in the event that you get Caius, you can just flip Skill Drain and protect your uh, Sun Dragon Inti uh, and as well as the uh, Moon Dragon in game one. Uh, but the, also people play DD Worry Lady as well, if you're playing against fairies, for example. So if you're playing against fairies, you want to be able to stop the uh, banishing effect of DD Worry Lady. So you can just flip the skill drain and then be able to play. Some people also main deck uh, Vanity's Fiend as well as Archer Lacristia. So you can also negate the effects of that while it's on the field and then be able to special summon. So that's why I play the skill drain. It really works really well with the Sun Dragon and the Moon Dragon because um, they have their effects activated when they're destroyed. Uh, and sent to the graveyard and so that makes it so that it's a, a very prime candidate to play skill drain in this deck um, to be able to negate a lot of the effects there is currently no skill drain decks in uh, edison metagaming so because of that people aren't afraid to normal summon kaius normal summon shadows normal summon a lot of different effect monsters that activate on on play so if you like skill drain decks this is a deck that i will recommend for you because it is a deck that does really well without using the on play effects of anything uh, if you look at the um, the monster lineup None of the monsters I play have an on-field on effect. They have graveyard effects that activate when they're destroyed uh, somehow, So, or they don't have an effect at all when it's destroyed at all. So that's kind of the idea of this deck, so that's why I tempted to play the skill drain. I also play the layer wire, I forget to mention before, as a chainable way of destroying monsters. And since you are playing insects in your, uh, in your deck, you're able to at least destroy face-down monsters. Uh, face down monsters can be a bane to your deck, especially if you don't have skill drain and you read that they have a recruiter monster or a DD Warrior Lady set. You can destroy the card face down. You can also destroy Vanity's Fiend. You can destroy Absolute Zero if you don't have a monster. Uh, mind you, you don't really care about having your monsters be destroyed uh, because they have uh, on field effects. Uh, especially these two. So you want to play because your deck, your graveyard is uh, your deck is graveyard centric. Uh, your skill drain is going to be working for you as well as layer wire. Uh, and then we also have mind control and brain control to be able to steal level five monsters on your opponent's side. Uh, Soroko is a very common target uh, for brain control and mind control, and so it is a level five monster that you can use for your uh, sun dragon circulation. Uh, as well as your moon drag circulation so that's kind of the idea another monster you can steal is android and Cataster. those are also synchro monsters you can steal with brain control if you're playing against hero beat that likes to normal summon diva into gilman then you can steal the Cataster and then synchro summon with it 
So that's kind of the idea. It's a very interesting deck, I would say. Uh, I've been working really hard on this deck, uh, but I haven't quite cracked it. I've only won one match out of like six. Uh, but granted, all those six matchups were all meta decks, uh, except for one. I played against GB, and that was my only win. GB's is not quite meta because it's a deck that like uh, it's kind of like anti anti meta, I would say. So that was my only win. But GB's typically has a good matchup against a lot of different matchups, uh, except for a lot of different um, S tier decks. Uh, but the idea is the skill drain is able to shut off the Gaizaris and the Bestiari, and then the Starlight Road is able to protect your Gaizaris, uh, Gaizaris from popping your back row. So because you have these two cards, you can pretty much win safely against GBs. You also have big monsters too, so uh, having big monsters and not having letting them have monsters to attack is uh, a big advantage that you can have against Gladiator Beasts. Uh, what else do I have to say about this other than uh, did I already mention Limit Reverse? Yeah, I already mentioned limit reverse. Uh, yeah, so it's again. I want to say that I want to stress that this is a go second deck. Uh, that's why I don't play the dust tornadoes in the main deck going first, uh, going second because it's a really poor card going second. So you want to have a card that's really good going first or second, so that you can destroy their back row and then do your synchro play. It's a very uh, level eight synchro deck, uh, but it could also be a level six synchro deck as well. So uh, because five D's era or Edison is a five D's era. Um, format uh you want to be able to use your synchros uh appropriately in this format so yeah I, on the next uh segment of this video i'll have some gameplay videos to explain or show you guys and demonstrate to you guys what this deck can do uh and then let's see what this deck can't do i guess uh so i'll stay tuned for that video